On three fronts, the Finns won important victories today. But in the far north, Russian tanks and mechanized columns, aided by bombing planes, drove them out of their positions at Pitka Yerevi and in full retreat to the southward. A Russian drive toward Rovaniemi from the eastward was driven back today. And, of course, this northern attack is still a long way off, but the Russian mechanized forces seem to be moving fast. Another proof of the advantage the Russians get from mere numbers. The Finns can't stop them everywhere at once. And on this northern front, they seem to have used their best troops and their best equipment. On the Karelian Isthmus, Russian assaults were again repulsed. The Finns say they destroyed 36 tanks today and a total of 212 since the war began. But the Russians still have about 5,000 left. Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. When the Winter War began in 1939, the Finnish Air Force operated a very small number of fighter aircrafts, the most modern of which was Fokker D-21. Another fighter type which the Finns attempted to acquire before the war was the Italian Fiat G-50. 35 examples were ordered just before the Soviet invasion began. This Italian fighter named Freccia, meaning arrow, was developed according to a specification issued by the Italian Air Force in 1936. Although the same specification also resulted in a superior Mach-E C200, the Fiat G50 was ordered along with it as a safety backup. This contemporary of Spitfire, Hurricane and Messerschmitt BF-109 was clearly inferior to these famous fighters, but the Finns had limited options. Although relatively maneuverable, G-50 was underpowered with 840 horsepower engine and underarmed with two 12.7mm synchronized machine guns. The first 14 examples of the Italian fighter only arrived to Finland in February 1940. Germans certainly contributed to this delay by not allowing the shipment to go across their territory, so they had to be shipped by sea. Germany at the time was allied to the Soviet Union. Once they arrived to Finland, G-50s were issued to No. 26 Squadron, previously flying Gloucester Gladiator biplanes. In one of our previous videos, we talked about the leading Finnish Gladiator ace, Oiva Tuominen. If you missed that video, click on the recommendation link. In this one, we will look at his performance flying the Fiat G-50. The airplane did get a chance to fly combat missions before the Winter War ended in mid-March. After only about 10 days of training on the new type, 26 squadron pilots were sent to fight the Soviets. At least one of the planes was lost, but Finnish pilots claimed 11 enemy aircraft. Oiva Tuominen claimed two Soviet bombers, which were being fired upon by Finnish AAA at the same time. The two bombers were credited to the ground unit, and even though Tuominen wanted the wrecks to be examined to determine who had shot him down, his squadron leader refused. Tuominen ended the Winter War as the second most successful Finnish ace with 8 confirmed kills, behind Jorma Sarvanto with 13. German invasion of the USSR triggered the renewal of hostilities between Finland and the communist country in June 1941. This is known as the Continuation War. Oiva Tuominen used the armistice period to get acquainted with his new aircraft. 
Sometimes his attitude would get him in trouble. For example, he was reprimanded for flying inverted over a lake at wave tops. This was dangerous as the Fiat engine would leak water and fuel while inverted, risking fire. Tuominen claimed his first kills of the Continuation War on 4 July 1941. He was based at Yuensu, and his flight of G-50s was scrambled at about 11 o'clock to intercept Soviet bombers. Right after takeoff, Tuominen broke from the formation, sensing where he could find the enemy. And indeed, he soon spotted 12 unescorted SB bombers at 1,000 meters of altitude. His Fiat didn't have a radio, so he couldn't inform the other pilots in his flight. He approached the formation from below and opened fire on one of the aircraft from 50 meters distance. The Soviet bomber caught fire and dived. Tuominen then approached another aircraft and first hit the gunner and then one of the engines. His own plane was hit by a gunner from another SB, but Tuominen continued hitting his victim until the plane dived away with burning engines. He then focused on the bomber that hit him. The entire formation was trying to hide in the clouds and Tuominen finished off his victim before they succeeded. kept pursuing the formation and waited for them to emerge out of the clouds. He attacked a fourth SB and damaged its engine. As his Fiat was leaking fuel, Duominen had to disengage and landed back almost on fumes. Finnish ground crew witnessed his first three kills while the wreckage of the fourth bomber was found later. Soviet bombers belonged to 72nd Bomber Regiment. One of the bomber pilots was captured and Tuominen met him. It took a while to convince the Soviet pilot that only one enemy fighter was attacking his formation as he believed there were three of them. Another opportunity for Tuominen to increase his score came on 14 July during a patrol in Karvala area. He spotted three SB bombers at 1,800 meters and attacked them. He first damaged one of them and then finished it off after they made a turn. He then shot down another bomber. Three I-16 fighters appeared but quickly disengaged. The bombers also belonged to the 72nd Bomber Regiment and three of the air crews survived and were able to reach the positions held by Soviet forces. Tuominen was promoted to warrant officer on 23rd July, 
and on 30 July he claimed two more SB bombers. These, however, were not confirmed since there were no witnesses. On 1st of August he claimed an I-16 fighter. This kill was confirmed and the enemy fighter probably belonged to the 7th fighter regiment. On the evening of 3rd August 1941, Tuominen was credited with a different kind of a victory. He and Lauri Sikhva encountered three Soviet MBR-2 flying boats. Each pilot was credited with one kill plus a shared kill of the third plane. On 5th August, six Fiat G-50s were scrambled to intercept a group of Soviet fighters attacking the Finnish front line. There were three I-152s and three I-153s. The I-152s were all shot down and Oiva Tuominen claimed one of them. After that, Tuominen received the Mannerheim Cross, the highest Finnish military decoration. On 3rd September, a flight of four G-50s was flying a combat air patrol over the Finnish troops advancing towards Svira River. Finnish pilots were Oiva Tuominen, Oni Paronen, Lauri Sihvo and Karl Erik Brun. The flight encountered a group of two Soviet I-16s and three I-153s, otherwise known as Ratas and Chaikas. A dogfight developed in which Paronen and Sihvo each claimed an I-153. Tuominen shot down one I-16 and shared another with Paronen.
As the last I-153 was attempting to disengage at low level, the Finnish pilots chased it and took turns trying to shoot it down. Brun was the one that finished the Chaika off and the plane crashed. Until the end of 1941, Oiva Tuomen and claimed only an observation balloon on 30 September. The G-50s of his squadron were grounded for long periods of time because their engines were worn out and could not be replaced fast enough. Despite this, at the end of 1941, Tuominen was one of the three most successful Finnish pilots of the Continuation War with 13 confirmed kills. He continued to fly Fiat G-50 and score victories until February 1943 when he converted to Messerschmitt Bf 109. He survived the war as the fifth most successful Finnish ace, but all of that might be a story for another video. If you like this one, don't forget to press the like button. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal, because viewer support is probably the only way for this channel to stay in business. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.